Morning, Eddie. Morning, Mark. We'll start with the events over the course of the international break. Obviously, you know, horrendous scenes in the England v Bulgaria game, of which Callum Wilson was a part. Have you had the opportunity to speak to him off the back of his return and, and his thoughts and mentality of the, what was a really difficult period of time? Yeah, I spoke with him um, yesterday and had a long chat about the, the situation. Uh, incredibly disappointing to see. Um, I watched it live and um, yeah, it was a tough watch. Um, although you couldn't hear anything, you, you could sense what was happening at the stadium. Um, I have to say, I thought Callum and the rest of the England players acted with real class um, and did a brilliant job in uh, dealing with the situation and then getting on and playing the game and played ever so well as well. So, uh, you know, full credit to everyone involved with how they reacted, I think. How's Callum's mental state after that? Uh, Callum's fine. He's a strong, very, very strong character. And I don't think it's, unfortunately, it's, it's nothing new um, for him to have to deal with. So, um, no, 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 no effects on him mentally. He's, um, he's fine. And in terms of situation, do you feel that England and Gareth did the right things and it, uh, it was the right outcome for, for them and, and the game? Yeah, I think, um, as I said, I think the way they handled the situation was, was excellent. Um, you know, in terms of the protocols and, and everything like that and how we should handle things in the future is such a, a big topic of conversation. I think I'd probably leave that to other people. Um, but in terms of the, you know, the guys involved and the way that they spoke to each other and conducted themselves, then they were, I thought they were faultless. Would you have taken them off the pitch? No, I, p personally, I, I, I don't think I would have done. Um, I think playing the game and, and winning um, and performing and showing your your best abilities is is the right way to answer any type of um, comments. I, I, I think you know, players want to play as well, and I think you could see that from the England team. I think they wanted to play and perform well and, and answer that way. Um, I don't think this is, again. This is just my opinion. I don't think you want to see game stopped um, and almost that that vile abuse to win. So. Yeah, but it's a big topic of conversation and everyone will have a different opinion. Um, you know, that's just my, my thoughts. International break is always a time where you like to utilise the players that are left here at the club. How did you use the time over the course of this international break to work with the players you had? Yeah, we did some good work. We were left with a small group, but we did some good work in terms of, I think we had a behind closed doors game, um, a little bit of team building in there. Um, players went and visited the academy during the week, which was really nice. So we, we've we filled the time, hopefully in a productive way for the club. Um, and yeah, we've enjoyed it. And you mentioned there some, some tea building. Obviously, it's a, a bit of a sport that you, you love as well, that you, you got the lads involved with. I didn't know news had broken, <laughs> Mark. <laughs> yeah, no, we, we took the lads for just something different. Again, just trying to inspire them to uh, enjoy themselves. So it was cricket this time and um, you know, the staff weren't playing. It was players only. And uh, there was some unusual techniques techniques I'd not seen before <laughs> in terms of how you hold a cricket bat and roll a cricket ball but it was uh, it was all good fun but of course you could have potentially become a professional cricketer because you were very very good as well as being good at football and you had a decision to make when you were younger it's a big statement to say I could have been a professional cricket player. I enjoyed cricket and I was reasonably good at it but I want to uh, see how fast that cricket ball is bowled these days I think I made the right call <laughs> <laughs> not to get involved has everyone come back uh, fit and healthy from international break, the players that were away with their respective clubs? Uh, yeah, pretty much. We haven't seen, I think we've seen everybody now, but there's a, a, a couple of slight concerns. But I think in the main, you know, when you lose your players for that period of time, you know they've got games ahead, you're, you're always slightly fearful how they're going to come back. But we, we can be relatively pleased. What's the team news ahead of the game with Norwich this weekend? Team news is we're, we're pretty much as we were. Adam Smith's getting closer. Um, David Brooks is still some way away, so is Dan Gosling, uh, so is Junior Stanislas, um, but the rest are, are pretty much there. You say about Adam Smith getting closer, how close is he, what's the latest and, and is he back in light training yet? Yeah, he's trained. Um, we've had to take our time with his hamstring injury, it wasn't a, um, uh, an absolute clear low grade strain, so we, we had to be careful with him, we've taken our time with him, so yeah, he's close. And David Brooks, you said not too close, but Every week that passes, he, he does get a, that a little bit closer to first team action, and obviously a key player when he returns. Yeah, he's at the stage where he's we're building his fitness. We haven't seen him, as I say, in training, but we're building that endurance um, that he needs, and that's the process he's going through. I wouldn't say he's particularly enjoying it because it's really, really hard work. But um, once he gets back on the grass, that's when he'll have a big smile on his face. 
and he'd be kicking a ball again. So he's doing some some hard yards at the moment, but he's not too far away. Up next, Norwich City, um, a team that beat Manchester City, but since then have lost all three games. How do you assess the way they've approached the Premier League campaign? Well, they've approached the Premier League in a, a Norwich City fa fashion under Daniel. Really, they've. Um, I think they've been really impressive. Uh, I watched their first game against Liverpool. I thought they did really well. They got beaten, but they did really well in the game. Um, and I admire any team that has a clear philosophy and sticks with it. And they're a very attacking team, brave team, uh, good technical players. Um, so, yeah, the fact that they beat Man City, as we know, that is incredibly difficult to do. So, uh, yeah, full credit to them for that result. And I think it shows their capabilities. And we know we're going to have to be very good in this game. Um, in all aspects of our play because they're a dangerous team. Do they remind you of Bournemouth in, in some senses when you came up in 2015, the sort of no fear attitude, lots of young hungry players that are desperate to prove themselves and they, they go into every game believing they win as, as, as they have done? I think there are similarities for sure. I think, um, you know, they play really good football. I really admire their, their way of playing. Um, as you say, they do have young players, a lot of talented young technical players who can handle the football and, and can make the difference in the final third. So uh, we know from our cup game against them last year you know, how good they can be. They gave us a tough game that night. We won the game, but it was a, a really difficult game and that showed the, the glimpse of their capabilities. I then had no surprise that they got promoted after seeing them um, that night. And uh, yeah, we know a tough, tough opponent. When you look at obviously the, the strike force and in particular Timu Puki, someone who scored 29 goals in the championship last season, you often see players that score that number of goals in the second tier struggle to make the transition to the Premier League. But he seems to have adapted really, really well. And again, scoring goals on international duty, he's going to be a, a threat. Isn't he? Yeah, he is a very good player. He scored, as you say, two goals on uh, international duty this week, two, two really good goals. So we know his strengths and his, his threat. And I think any team that has a goal scorer like that in their ranks um, is a dangerous team. And that's why I say we, we know that um, we know our capabilities, we know what we can do, but we're going to have to hit those high levels. Um, I was, when you look at the last block of four games we had, I was impressed with us. Our return was good. Um, the two wins early and then the West Ham game, we, we feel disappointed we didn't win. And then the Arsenal game, disappointed we didn't come away from something uh, from that game as well. So I think we, we are building momentum in our season. Uh, this is going to be a, a key game for us. A couple of final points from me. TV fixtures have been announced, um, and it's not ideal, really. The 26th Boxing Day, you play uh, Arsenal at 3 o'clock, and then less than 48 hours later, you play at 12.30 against Brighton. Is that, that's not enough time to prepare your side? No, but it's an English fixture list around Christmas time. I think um, you, you become accustomed to it and used to it. There's no point us sitting here and complaining, it's not ideal. Of course, you'd like more time to prepare and give your players a chance to be going into that game in a better physical condition, but it is what it is. And we have to deal with it and adjust to it. We've got the squads for, for these things. So I remember playing games around Christmas time and always said I really enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed the game, so I had no issue with, with playing tight games. But I think now in the Premier League with the speed of the game and the physical, um, outputs that the players give it, it's a different game to the one that I played. So maybe that's why I could go again. And finally, um, Carl Fletcher left the club this week. Obviously someone who capped in the side, came through the youth setup, was a massive part of the team in 2003 that got promoted at the Millennium Stadium. Someone that's worked as your backroom staff, the 23s, loan manager. How disappointed were you to see him depart, but also pleased that he's got such a, a great opportunity at a club like Leighton Orient? Pleased for him, really. That's my first emotion. You know, when you when you build a staff around you, you want the best people possible. Um, Carl has always been a very valued member of staff, as you said, good experiences with the 18s, the 23s, loan manager. So he, he's done various roles that um, I think has developed him as a, a person, really. And you now he goes with our best wishes. There's a bit of sadness, of course, because you're losing a really valued member of, of your team. But uh, I want everyone in my team to fulfil their dreams and um, match, max their... Uh, ability so he wanted to get back into management I think he's chosen a great club to do it with and I hope it goes well for him